In this video, we're going to introduce options. Now, in my experience from teaching options, this is something that students tend to really struggle with. And a lot of it is terminology. A lot of options are different from your basic concepts of looking at stocks and bonds and, and basic time value of money. So in order to get options down, it's really important that you take some time and make sure you get familiar with the terminology as we start going through the option process. I'm going to introduce options with this video and there will be several other videos where we look at some more issues related to options. First of all, a definition. An option is just the right, but not the obligation, to buy or sell an underlying asset. Usually that underlying asset is shares of common stock at or before a specific date for a pre-specified price. That pre-specified price is referred to as the strike price or exercise price. Now, the two basic types of options are call options and put options. A call option is the right to buy the underlying asset, again typically shares of common stock. Put option is the right to sell the underlying asset. Again when I started I mentioned how important it is to get the terminology down. In order to really follow options you have to get to the point where when you hear the terms call and put you immediately understand that a call is the right to buy and a put is the right to sell. The quicker that you understand those, terminal, or those terms the quicker you'll pick up options. As I mentioned the exercise price or sometimes referred to as the strike price is that pre-specified price at which we can buy or sell the underlying stock. Typically stock options expire on the third Friday of the expiration month. I say typically because recently the options exchange has started offering weekly options for some of the more actively traded stocks and those options will expire at the end of each week. So you can buy an option on Monday that expires on that Friday. However, typically people are thinking of options that are monthly options instead of weekly and those options expire on the third Friday of the expiration month. So let's look at an example. Assume it's June 1st and at this point in time Apple stock is currently trading for 345 and those were approximate numbers when I made up this example but stock prices fluctuate by the second so if you're looking at this video now it's very likely well past June 1st. Apple is trading for something other than 345. So just in our example, assume that it is June 1st. Assume that Apple is trading for $345. The June 350 call is trading for 410 and the June 350 put is trading for 860. Let's look back at that. June 350 call means that that gives us the right but not the obligation to buy 100 shares for one contract of Apple stock for $350 per share. Apple's currently trading for $345, so right now there's no value to being able to buy that stock for $350. However, Apple could go up a little or go up significantly between now and the third Friday in June and that's why we're willing to pay the $4.10 for the right, but not the obligation to buy Apple stock at $3.50. The June 350 put, that gives us the right, but not the obligation to sell Apple stock for eight or for $350 per share. We're currently willing to pay $8.60 per share to do that. Now when buying stock options, a contract is based on 100 shares of the underlying stock. Therefore, if we buy one of the June 350 call options, it's going to cost us $410. Remember the price of the individual call option was $4.10, but since we're buying a contract on 100 shares, we're going to have to multiply that $4.10 by 100. That'll give us the 410. Then there's going to be commissions on top of that. Those commissions will vary depending on if you're using a regular internet broker or a full service broker. Typically you're going to look at about $10 to $20 on commissions on those if you're using a general internet broker. Remember, 
buying that June 350 call contract is going to give you the right but not the obligation to buy 100 shares of Apple stock for $350 per share anytime between now and the third Friday in June. We're not going to get into this in this video, but it's very rare that you would want to exercise your option to actually buy the stock prior to expiration. So even though you have the right to buy stock for $350 between now and the third Friday in June, typically you will not exercise that right until expiration, which is the third Friday in June. Now let's look at why people like options. Assume that Apple stock, prices, stock price rises $370 when our option expiration arrives. So we fast forward a couple weeks. Remember we bought this option on June 1st. It's now the third Friday in June and Apple stock is trading for $370 per share. Our option will now be worth $20 per share. Remember each contract was for 100 shares, so that's $2,000 per contract. We paid $410 per contract. So now we have a profit of $1,590 over just a couple of weeks. So we have our 410 initial investment. We had $2,000 in profit. Our $2,000 that sales price that gives us a profit of $1,590. That's a 388% return. Just real quick to capture that return, we take our profit divided by our initial investment. is 3.88 but remember we've got to convert that to percentages that's so going to give us a 388 percent return over a really short time period options give tremendous leverage with options I tend to use the analogy of a home run hitter in baseball you're not getting a 5 percent return or a 10 percent return you're trying to really hit the ball out of the park and get some of those 100, 200, 300 percent returns with options. Now, if you're familiar with baseball, you notice that a lot of home run hitters strike out a lot. That's going to be true with options as well. A lot of times you're going to buy that option. It's not going to, the stock price isn't going to go up and you're going to lose your initial investment. So let's look at what happens if Apple stock would have went up, but not very much. Remember, Apple was trading for $345 when we purchased the option and we bought a $350 strike price option, which means we had the right to buy the stock for $350 a share. If Apple stock goes up from $345 to $350, we now have the right to buy a $350 stock for exactly $350. There's no value in doing that. You're getting the right to buy a stock for exactly what you could on the open market, so your option is going to expire worthless. In this case, you're going to lose your entire initial investment of $410. So when you buy a call option, you're hoping the stock price goes up, but it has to go up rather significantly in a short period of time in order for you to make a return on that. If it does, your returns can be extremely large. If the stock price stays where it is, falls, or only goes up a little bit during that time period, you're probably going to lose money on your option. It may be your entire initial investment. It may be part of your initial investment. However, now we're going to look at some of the other protection advantages from buying an option. An option gives you most of the upside of a stock. Once the stock starts going above 350, we're going to capture the additional upside of that. But Remember, Apple was trading at $345 when we purchased the stock. What happens if Apple stock falls all the way down to $200? Apple just gets crushed. Our option is still going to be worth exactly what it's worth if Apple goes to $300 or $345 or $350. At any price where the stock price is equal to or below that strike price, our Apple option is going to expire worthless and we're going to lose our initial investment of $410.
does it matter whether Apple closes at $1 or at $350 on the third Friday of June? We're going to lose the same amount, and that's at $410 investment. So what would our break-even point be? Well, since we've already invested $410, we need the contract to have a value of $410 at expiration in order to break even. This means that the value of the stock at expiration must be $4.10 above the strike price. Quick way to see that, our break even is going to be that $350 strike price plus the $4.10 premium that we originally paid for the option. So the stock price is going to have to go to $354.10 by the third Friday in June for us to make a profit on this option. Anything above $354.10 is going to allow us to make a profit. The higher that goes, the more our profit is going to be. Anything below 350, we lose our entire initial investment, and between 350 and 354.10, we lose part of our initial investment. So to summarize, for the Apple 350 June call, we're going to make a profit if the stock closes above $354.10. Our maximum loss of 410 will occur if the stock closes at 350 or below at expiration. We can look at that graphically with the chart as follows. So here's a little diagram I made up in Excel. You can see our vertical axis is our profit. It's going to range from negative $410 on up. Here you can see our loss of $410. Anything below $350, $350 on down. I cut the graph off at $200, but really it keeps going all the way till the stock price falls to zero. We lose our entire initial investment. That's that negative $410 that we're going to lose if the stock price falls below $350. That $350 was our strike price At 350, we hit our maximum loss. Remember our break-even point is $354.10. At that point, we're going to cover the initial cost of the option. Anything above there keeps generating more and more profits as the stock price goes up. That gives you a quick introduction to call options. Next video is going to be on put options.